There's like a really strong chocolatey fragrance coming off of it, which is kind of cool. I'm like pretty excited about that. And if you look at it, it's like the consistency of like a... Hey everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're making the world's best Cincinnati chili. And I'm pretty excited about it. So on this channel, as always, what we like to do is we look up on Google the world's best recipes. We try them out, we try to cook them just as a normal average Joe, although I'm Dave, so an average Dave, and we see if they really are the world's best. So let's look up world's best Cincinnati chili and see what Google gives us as a result. It looks like they're suggesting this recipe from Culinary Hall, and it honestly doesn't look too difficult, but I am super excited about the whole idea of it, and I'm really looking forward to trying this out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the prep work, because from what I can tell, this is actually gonna come together really easily, and I won't, I won't make you watch the whole entire onion cut process. I have a lot of people complain about that. They don't want to watch me cut onions. I'm sorry. I just, you know, I like recording myself cutting onions. It's just a passion of mine is, is poorly cutting onions. That's a passion of mine. <laughs> Not really. I don't know. I always just end up talking and then I don't want to cut out the talking because I may have said something interesting. But this time I will not leave all the onion cutting in. We are gonna do, I will say this though, just so you understand what's happening. We're gonna do two onions chopped, two chopped onions. Some of this goes into the chili and then some of this is used, I believe, as a garnish because Cincinnati chili can be served in a few different ways. And one of those ways includes putting raw onions on top, which doesn't sound that good to me, but then again, who knows? You know, I bought this mega cutting board. Do you like it? It's giant, it's giant. I actually didn't realize it was giant when I bought it. When I bought it, I was under the impression that it was an average size cutting board, but then it came in the mail and I was like, who ordered a ginormous thing? And my wife was like, I think that's your cutting board. <laughs> Who'd have thought? This stuff is flying all over the floor. Oops. But I don't know, it's kind of nice. It gives me some space to work, so I'm not complaining. I like it. I guess it also gives me more space to make a mess. The onion's going everywhere. Actually, I just looked at the recipe and it says two onions or more. And that's because the two onions go into the Cincinnati chili and then the more that you would cut up would be for the topping if you decide to top the chili with it. I didn't buy more onions, but that's okay. We don't need to try it with the onion as the topping. Uh, if that's sacrilege, let me know in the comments. I can always, you know, I could save like a, just a few little bits of onion to try at the end on top of it, but I don't really, not that into raw onions anyways, so I feel like that wouldn't be my favorite way to have it. Now, I was reading up about Cincinnati chili a little bit, and I found out that there's like a restaurant that's super popular in Cincinnati, and I'm not really in a authority on this, guys. I am not a professional cook. I have no culinary training. I just enjoy cooking. And on this show, we try to make a relatable show of just a normal guy cooking and what it's like to just do your best based on whatever Google recommends you. But anyways, I'm trying not to show myself chopped onions because you all hate it. So let me tell you the rest of the story after I'm done chopping this. Yeah, I went down this like whole rabbit hole. Wait, how much garlic do I need? Oh, just one clove. About how like this Macedonian guy and his brother came to the US and they created Cincinnati chili. And originally it was like part of their hot dog, I think. Like they would put it on their hot dog in uh, Cincinnati. Or was it Chicago? I can't remember. I'm not a history teacher, but anyways, I found it very interesting. Originally they opened some restaurant called like Empress next to a burlesque club and sold it. And then eventually it came, became popular. I don't know. There was a, another restaurant called Skyline. And I think people now know this as Skyline Chili because I was telling my friend that I was gonna cook Cincinnati chili and he's like, what's that? And I was describing it and he's like, that sounds like Skyline Chili. And when I looked it up, sure enough, this is also known as Skyline Chili. So if you've heard of Skyline Chili, this is the same thing. It's just people now call it Cincinnati Chili, Empress Chili, whatever you wanna call it. Supposedly they sell it in the store too, but the reason it's different than normal chilies, well, you'll see there's some unique ingredients in it and they serve it in a really different way, which we're gonna get to. I'm excited about it though. I've never tried it, so I'm looking forward to it. I've been to Cincinnati a couple times, but I never even knew to look out for this, so. Now, what I did is I just chopped off, chopped up one clove of garlic. So you've got two onions chopped up, kind of a big piece of onion, maybe I'll shrink it down a little bit, and one clove of garlic chopped up. And then you want some chocolate, which is very weird, but that's what the recipe calls for. It calls for one ounce of chocolate, Let's see, does it say how much an ounce is? This whole entire thing, okay, four pieces is one ounce. So this is just unsweetened baker's chocolate. It's gotta be unsweetened from what I understand and you need four pieces of it. So let's see how big a piece is. I would eat the whole thing, but it probably wouldn't taste very good. Oops, I almost got four pieces. There you go. Four pieces of unsweetened baker's chocolate. Now, I don't think you need to chop this up at all because it's just gonna melt in the 
cooking process, so it would be kind of a waste of time to chop it up. Now, if you're putting something like that in cookies, you'd want to chop it up, or brownies, but in a chili, I think we're okay. And actually, that's gonna go in at the same time. Let me get a bowl, I think I've got a bowl. I'm just gonna put that into a bowl, because it's gonna go in at the same time as a couple other spices. And you know what, maybe we'll just get all those spices ready. We just have a spice dump once we're actually cooking. Because we're not cooking yet, but we're gonna be cooking really soon. We're still kind of prepping the Cincinnati chili. Hopefully the world's best. Okay, so I'm just reading to see what we add all at the same time. It looks like the chocolate and the garlic all go in simultaneously. Not the onions though, they go in separate. What is this, an onion? Yeah. And next, I'm gonna add to this mix of chocolate and garlic. It's so funny, chocolate and garlic. What a weird combination, but I'm into it. Uh, two tablespoons, I hope I'm right with that measurement, of chili powder. Let's make sure it's even. One, and, well, I don't wanna pour it over it because then I'm gonna make a mess. Makes sense though, chili powder and chili. I have two other chili videos. There you go. I just added two tablespoons of chili into there. Chili powder into there. I have two other chili videos on this channel, guys. If you're into chili, I've got a, a world's best chili where I just looked up the world's best chili like I did with the Cincinnati chili here. And then I've got my own personal favorite chili recipe. This is oregano, just dried oregano leaves. One tablespoon of that is going to go in with the chocolate and all this other stuff. All right, and then we'll set the oregano aside. I think it's pretty cool that there's like this whole following for the Cincinnati chili and I've never even heard of it. So what we're adding now is cinnamon, another weird chili ingredient, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. So we've got chocolate, cinnamon. Sounds like I'm making a cookie or a brownie, but I am making a chili. So really, ooh, it smells <laughs> so cinnamony. All right, we need three quarters of a teaspoon of, wait, where is it? All right, so we need three quarters, is that right? Three quarters of a teaspoon of allspice, which I'm not even really sure what allspice is. It smells like Christmas. Yeah. Very Christmassy, so I'm gonna do a half teaspoon, like so, and then a quarter teaspoon. Uh-oh, I hear a fire truck or something. A quarter teaspoon, so there you go. You got three quarters of a teaspoon of allspice. You know what that reminds me of? Gingerbread cookies. I don't know if it's related at all or if it's in gingerbread cookies, but that's what it reminds me of. And then we need a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. No, that's not right, I already did the cinnamon. Oh, almost messed up cloves, but we only need a half a teaspoon. So, okay, let me try again. We need a half teaspoon of cloves, and I didn't mess it up, I just verbally messed it up. So half teaspoon of cloves goes in there, and we'll set that aside too. Cloves, guys, cloves, cinnamon, chocolate, Cincinnati, you crazy. We're gonna try it though, could be good. All right, so I'm gonna set this over here, I guess. That's all gonna go in the mix once we actually start cooking. We haven't even started cooking yet. We're gonna get to that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my cameras over here where my actual little grill top is. And we're gonna actually start preparing this food. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so I'm over here. I think I've got everything set up. This is my little, you know, camp stove. I'm gonna turn it on real quick. All right, so we've got our flame there, nice and hot. We're gonna put our Dutch oven on top. You can use any big pot. I'm using a Dutch oven, but you can use whatever you want. And now we're actually gonna get to cooking this. We're gonna do a tablespoon of olive oil in here. This feels like it's putting off a lot of heat. I'm gonna turn it down a little. It's hard to judge the, uh, the heat output of this thing because it doesn't really have a medium setting. But anyways, we got our oil in there. Now we're gonna add the onions. All right, so let's add the onions in. Get them all in there. All right, so I'm gonna stir these onions around. I did go in and get them. <laughs> a wooden spoon so I can actually stir it up. Yeah, looks like onions cooking, right? No problems there. Got the onions cooking on the cooktop. And then we're gonna do this for like five minutes, I said, until they get translucent. All right, so these are starting to sizzle a little bit. And uh, Callie's in the house. Say hi, Callie. Hi. She's being shy. So Callie, I'm making a chili and I wanted to tell you about it. It's a chili, but it's got chocolate in it. Unsweetened chocolate. And cin oh, she knew, she knew. She said unsweetened. She was well aware of my trick. So you're not gonna try it? No. Callie doesn't wanna try chili. Callie, I need, you know, you can do one thing for me. I need two cups of chicken broth. Now, we're not gonna put in the chicken broth yet, but we're gonna measure it out because it makes it easier later. Can you measure that out into the okay. measuring cup there while I stir this? Yeah. So this is something you can do like while the onions are cooking, get ready for some of the steps that are coming up. We are gonna have to add that chicken broth after we add in the spices with the cinnamon and all that other stuff. So we're gonna have to do that. Might as well get it measured out, make our lives easier later. Let me take a look, maybe a little more. Okay, another thing we're gonna add around the same time we add that chicken broth, which that chicken broth is like weirdly clear. Look at this. Hey, right, hold on. Show it to you. I'll just show it to you up here. Isn't that clear? I thought they used to be darker. Could be, could be wrong. Uh, so we've got a can of tomato sauce, Hunt's tomato sauce. This is 15 ounces. The recipe called for 16, but I couldn't find any 16 ounces. This like that whole thing where the sizes are getting smaller, but it costs the same amount. Like Hunt's is being sneaky. The charging is the same amount for less tomato sauce. Anyways, I only could find a 15 ounce can and also some tomato paste. I think it calls for like two teaspoons or two tablespoons. We'll get to that in a minute. So, you know, get your can opener, open those up, which I'll do 
in a second. Callie ran to get me the can opener. Two more ingredients you can have at the ready is brown sugar, our brown sugar, brown sugar and wor wor Worcestershire sauce. Everyone always writes down like phonetically how to spell it or how to say it. And then I forget by the time I come record. So sorry guys. Wor Worcester sauce? Someone said Worcester sauce. And then someone like wrote it out. They said Worcester sauce. I don't know. All right, these are, it's been about five minutes on these onions, so I think we could be pretty good to move on to the next step here. Callie's got our can opener. Nice. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, that's a can opener. Wow, Appreciate it. So much onions on the ground, Dad. Oh, she called me out for dropping onions on the ground. Do you want to do it? Yes. You just do that. And twist it. Right? Squeeze it really hard. Squeeze like that. Now turn this thing. It's probably, oh, you got to hold this at the same time. So hold this, let go of the can. So she's a lefty. So she's actually struggling with this because... It's it's not really designed for a lefty, I don't think. It's, I think it's designed for a righty. Come over here so they can see. Show them what you're doing. You're reaching over. <laughs> it's not lefty friendly. So, okay. We learned something new today. This is made for righties. Oops. Let me hold it. They must have like a lefty and a righty version of uh, can openers. I didn't think about that. Which, to be honest here, let me just grab it. To be honest, your mom is a lefty and she uses this. So we should ask, oh man, we should ask her what the trick is. Dad, you're opening it backwards. Oh, it is upside down. Maybe that's why I'm having... Uh, difficulties. <laughs> that is probably what's happening. I'm opening it upside down. Well, wait, who started this? You or me? That's working better. No, my gosh, it's not. Hold on. Let me go over to the table. Oh, they're turning brown. I know. That's, I'm burning the onions. Okay. All right. Watch out. Watch out. I don't want to burn you. All right. So the onions are like going too far because I was having all those issues. So what we want to do now that the onions are, you know, warmed up is add all these ingredients we talked about. Is that the chocolate? That is chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate, cinnamon, cloves. How's the chocolate gonna melt? It'll melt, it's hot in this thing. All right, so the key here, oh my gosh, that smells interesting, is to heat it up for 30 seconds. Here, put that over there for me. Heat that up for 30 seconds until it becomes fragrant. Do you know what fragrant means, Callie? Uh, smelly. Smelly. Yep, What's is it smelly yet? No. It's not. All right, it's gonna burn. Let's add the uh, chicken broth. So we're gonna add the chicken broth to chill it out. There we go. I'm afraid I'm going to burn the chocolate Ow. and the uh, spices. Burning. There we go. All right. So now we got that. Stir that a little bit. That actually smells good. Kind of good. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the tomato sauce. Now that was tomato paste we were opening. We need the tomato sauce. This is a full can of tomato sauce. 15 ounces. 16 ounces is preferred, but I couldn't find it. That bird is loud. Pour that in there Ugh. with it. Okay, Callie's gonna, be careful, it's really hot. Callie's gonna stir it for us. All right, so she's stirring that for us and we're gonna add some apple cider vinegar. Ooh, so cider. two tablespoons worth it, worth of it. One, I'm gonna put, put it over the spoon. two. So two <laughs> tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Definitely, that's definitely something I've never put in a chili before. Okay, so as far as the tomato paste goes, we want two tablespoons of that. So here's one tablespoon we're gonna add now. There you go. And the second tablespoon. That's why it tastes like tomato sauce. This is brown sugar. So we're gonna add some brown sugar. It doesn't specify light or dark in the recipe for the Cincinnati chili. So I'm just gonna use light because that's what I got. So there's one teaspoon. And again, more sugar. This is a really odd chili recipe. Two teaspoons, stir that up. Okay, and then the next ingredient is gonna be our Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Also two teaspoons of that. So that's one teaspoon <laughs> and two teaspoons. It looks like vanilla. It does kind of look like vanilla, but it tastes way different. This actually is really interesting. There's like a really strong chocolatey fragrance coming off of it, which is kind of cool. I'm like pretty excited about that. And if you look at it, it's like the consistency of like a, a rich chocolate milk. I don't think it's going to taste like chocolate, but still like I can't help but associate the chocolate with what I put in it. It looks amazing so far. I'm excited to try the world's best Cincinnati chili, Callie. Are you? So now we got to add the protein. Do you know what the protein is? It's the meat. What kind of meat are we doing? Uh, Ground beef. Pig. So this is ground beef and the recipe specifically says, uh oh, my fridge kind of froze it a little bit. That's not good. Pig? Look at that. No, this is cow. Look at that. Fridge kind of froze it a little. So my fridge is set to too cold. I'm going to put it in anyways. That'll Pirates? trigger some people. No, no, not yet. So that one's a little frozen. This one's not. I mean, it's going to have to cook for like 25 minutes anyways. So it's going to cook through, I'm pretty sure. And it's not super frozen. It's just got a little layer of ice at the top. Ugh. So we're going to add our beef to the mix here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stir in the beef a little bit. It stinks about that frozen bit, but it'll it'll warm up here. Uh, and so basically 8515 ground beef is what it calls for. It specifically said 8515. A lot of times that's what I'll use to make a hamburger is 8515. Usually for something, I don't know, I rarely use anything more lean than that, but you could. So yeah, you can see that. Oops, <laughs> I just spilled it. 
trying to break that up. So we want to bring it to a boil. I'm going to turn up my heat a little bit to get it to a rolling boil. And we'll probably let this just warm up for the next three minutes and it'll probably be boiling by that time. All right, so this is already boiling a little bit. It says to bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat to a low simmer. So I'm going to turn the heat down, even though I've still got this frozen ground beef in here. Let me try to break it up a little. Okay, look, I, I got this pretty much all broken up, which I'm feeling much better about. Oh, here's another piece. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Actually, it's looking kind of disturbing. It's looking like a big bowl of barf, but I'm gonna turn the heat down a little so it simmers. Okay, so Callie has brought me over a giant thing of water. That this spilled. is literally just water. And so this is, yeah, she did spill it all over my socks. And I my guess foot. I should be wearing shoes, but I'm only wearing socks and now they're wet socks. So we're gonna put them on another burner on here. Uh, you probably don't really need to see this that much, but actually maybe I'll put it on this one right next to it. All right, and we'll put this on there. And we're gonna bring this water to a boil because we're actually gonna cook some spaghetti because Yay! I guess in Cincinnati, they put their chili on their spaghetti. So you excited about some chili spaghetti? Can I just have paschetti for dinner tonight? She just wants paschetti, guys. Please. If you're good. <laughs> I need pot holders. Can you go inside and get some pot holders? That's warming up. I really think I wanna move it over though. I'm gonna move it over to this other burner. Oh well, that one's not really doing anything. So I guess we're gonna leave it over here. That's all right, it'll still boil. All right, so we're gonna bring that to a boil. I'm gonna add a little salt because we're gonna cook spaghetti like we always cook spaghetti. And today I'm using Ronzoni and just put a little salt in the water. I haven't added any salt to the chili yet. I'm hoping that step comes up here in some form. Okay, so it actually says once you bring this to a simmer, which it's still not really simmering. Turn it up a little. There, now it's simmering. To add some salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just gonna add a little salt and a little pepper to taste on the Cincinnati chili. And you can always add more salt and pepper later. So I guess I'm not that concerned about it being the perfect amount right away. So we got our water boiling, we got our chili rolling. Now you can set a timer if you want. You want your chili to simmer for 20 to 25 minutes. You can see it's got little bubbles coming up. It's simmering, doing its little thing. So we're gonna let it do that for 20 to 25 minutes. We're gonna boil some water. We're gonna cook some spaghetti. We'll be back and really soon we're gonna be trying the world's best Cincinnati chili, so don't go anywhere. All right, so we're at a nice rolling boil on this water. So I'm gonna get, go ahead and add my spaghetti to it. And you know, I think we've all cooked spaghetti once or twice, right? But if not, just add your spaghetti to the water. <laughs> And what's it say? It says to cook it for uh, 11 minutes for firm, 10 for al dente, and 12 minutes to tender. Now, I'll say this, the recipe doesn't tell me how to cook my spaghetti, so I'll probably just cook it the way I like it, which is like right in the middle. I don't like it too hard, and I don't like it too soft, so I'll probably do like 10 minutes, I think is what it called for. I'm just adding my noodles. Ow, ooh, man, maybe I should have broken them in half. <laughs> They're sticking. I really need a fork, hold on. I like to give it a stir right when you add it so it doesn't get all stuck together. My heat's a little too hot on this thing. It's sticking to the side of the pan. This is a problem with this little grill thingy is like the heat comes up and around the pan and it's causing some issues. Like last time I cooked on here, I went and I grabbed the handles and that was a horrible idea because I burnt my hands really bad. So you gotta be careful using this kind of stove. Ideally I'd cook inside, but it's just inconvenient to cook inside based on the house setup. So we're cooking outside today. All right, so anyways, that's gonna be like 10 minutes. We have about 10 minutes left on the chili too. Let's give that a little stir and see how it's coming. Oh yeah, it's definitely thickening up nice. I'm not really even sure how thick it's supposed to be, but this is what the recipe calls for, so we're doing it. I think it is, is gonna end up being pretty thick though. My gosh, it smells really good. Mm. It's like so cinnamony and the cloves, it's like crazy interesting. If you haven't tried this, well, let me taste it first, then I'll tell you if I think you should. So we'll be back in like 10 more minutes. This'll be done, this'll be done, and we'll be able to taste the world's best Cincinnati chili. Okay, so my noodles are done. Got noodles here. I've drained the water, they're good to go. The chili is done too, so we're gonna pull it off the stove top too. Watch out, this is hot. There we go. I'm just gonna give this a little stir and we're ready to try this, although I feel like right now it would really burn my mouth pretty bad. And also we need butter for the noodles. Callie wants butter. That's a separate dish. This doesn't call for butter. But if you wanted to have some buttery noodles when this is done recording, you can do that. Yay! All right, so take a look at that. It looks really good. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're going to start to plate up here. We're gonna get to the beans and all that, so we're gonna get there, you'll see. So we've got a plate of spaghetti, and in Cincinnati, apparently, the way they do their chili is they put it on top of spaghetti, which is totally bizarre, but I'm on board for bizarre things like that. Whoa. So that is how they do their chili in Cincinnati. And there's multiple ways you can have it. You can have it 
one way, two way, three way, four way, five way. I guess one way is just eating it straight up. Two way is with spaghetti. Three way, hold on, I've got a list. Yeah, okay, so three way is when you add cheddar cheese, right? <laughs> Which I feel like that's the way I would like to eat it would be like this. You know, with a little cheddar cheese on it. And then four way is when you add beans or raw onion. Now I don't have any raw onion, but I can definitely add some beans and it calls for red kidney beans. It is pretty bizarre though. So I'm just gonna put them over here. Well, you know what, we'll do it this way. Both sides. I don't know if I'd order it this way. I'm not gonna do too many beans. Anyways, it looks interesting. We're gonna try it. Let me get a fork. I had one somewhere. Did I lose it? And I can use this fork. All right, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it four way first. So some chili, some noodles. Oh man, the noodles are a little Mm, mm. <laughs> All right, so I basically just got noodles. Let's get some beans and some chili on this forkful. Some big bite. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, let's try it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Kind yeah. of meaty, kind of. I'm gonna try to get a little more meat. I feel like I didn't get enough of the, the meat here. It's very like uh, sweet and Christmassy. <laughs> this is my instant reaction is it needs way more chili and way more cheese. Uh, can I do the cheese? And the beans aren't really doing much for me. You can add a little cheese. Cause I just want less spaghetti and more of the, the actual chili here in a bite. All right, <laughs> let me try this bite. The beans aren't bad, really. You wanna try it? I like it. You just wanna try it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna try just the chili and, tr and judge it for itself. As a whole, with the cheese, chili and the spaghetti, it's really good. Beans. It's a really delicious dinner. Absolutely no complaints. I like it a lot. I almost would say I love it. It's better than normal chili. Eh. I think it's different. It's different enough that it almost doesn't even fall into the same the same dinner category. But I want to try just the straight up chili and taste it for what it is. Okay, so the chili, chili itself is really good. Callie said the noodles falling out of my mouth was really gross. It's hard to do this, Callie, and not have them fall out of my also, mouth. Also, you said chili. <laughs> chili. <laughs> you said chili. Here, like chili. this, okay? Okay, perfect. But make sure it doesn't go out. Hmm? Of the good job. Hmm. Also, it's kind of gross because hmm. people don't want to see that. I do like the beans. Kind of matter a little The beans are good. No, I want to strain the beans, I think. This is delicious. This is not chili. It's not feeling like chili at all. It just feels like an interesting spaghetti sauce on my noodles, but I like it a lot. I love it. I would cook it again. It was actually really easy to cook. It's pretty cheap. So I would recommend it. I would say it's like, for me, like a nine out of 10, but I've never been to Skyline Chili in Cincinnati. I've never tried it in Cincinnati, but if you've never had Cincinnati chili or you have, this seems like a pretty solid recipe. All right, Tina, my wife is going to come try it. Yeah, on camera. Come on. Gosh. She doesn't want to come on camera. Come on, guys. Tell her to come on camera. No, there you go. You're not going to save this, are you? Since then, of course I'm going to save it. Wow, that's a big bite. That's not that big of a bite. <laughs> All right, so she's trying Cincinnati chili for the first time. She looks concerned. <laughs> doesn't taste like chili, that's uh, for no, sure. No, it tastes like spaghetti. Mom, do you want tastes like beans? spaghetti, With yeah. beans. What's With beans. beans. And what about the, the chili taste itself? Maybe you should try just some chili. What mm. did it taste like if you just add the juice Here, stuff? Here, put that on your fork. All right, she's gonna try just the chili and burn her mouth. Pretty good. Okay, so it doesn't, I don't even know if it needs the spaghetti. The spaghetti's how they do it in Cincinnati, but I almost would just make it as like a, a dish without the spaghetti. Rice. I think rice. I'm used to rice. Okay. Noodles is different. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to see more best recipes, and we'll see you next time.